Now that you have learned of the three financial statements, the income statement, the retained earnings, and the balance sheet, we're going to focus on the balance sheet and we're keeping in mind the end user. Now the classified balance sheet is one in which we classify the assets into four different categories, current assets, long-term investments, property, plant, and equipment, and intangible assets. We also classify the liabilities into those that are current and those that are long-term. This makes it easier for the person who is reading the financial statements to understand uh, better the status of the different assets and liabilities. For example, here Franklin Corporation, one point in time, end of business October 31st, 2012. Here you have the four categories, current assets, long-term investments, property, plant and equipment, and intangible assets. So there you have the four categories of assets. Notice the current assets are listed in a certain order. Cash, short-term investments, accounts receivable, notes receivable, inventory, supplies, and prepaid insurance. Now they are referred to as current assets because they're going to be used up within the next accounting period. And they are listed in the order of liquidity. Now the liquidity of an asset is about how quickly that asset can be turned back into cash. So cash of course is the most liquid. Short-term investments can be cashed in right away. Accounts receivable will be collected in 30 days and so on. So that's why they're listed in the order of liquidity. Long-term investments are investments in the shares of another company that we're going to hold for a long period of time. Or we invest in some property that we're going to use in the future, but we're buying it now. These two assets are not really operating assets for us. They're just investments that we are holding. The operating assets are property, plant, and equipment. Of course, land, equipment, less accumulated depreciation. I will explain depreciation later. But basically, that speaks to how much of the equipment we have used up. Then lastly, there are intangible assets, patents. The check mark on Nike is a, an idea of an intangible asset. On the other side, we have the current liabilities. Now, these are liabilities that will be paid within the next accounting period. Notes payable, accounts payable, salaries and wages payable, unearned sales revenue, interest payable. So they're listed that way, probably most likely in terms of how quickly we're going to have to pay them. Here they list them in the order of magnitude. It, it could be done that way, but you don't often see it that way. Then you have long-term liabilities. These are liabilities that I'm going to be paying more than a year. A mortgage is 10 or 20 years. The mortgage is a loan against a building. Notes payable will be paid back over a number of years. And then finally in the common stock, in the shareholders equity, we have the two accounts. Common stock, which indicates the value of the shares sold to the shareholders. And retained earnings, as we explained before, are the earnings that are being kept by the company and put to work. So let's look at these a little closer. Current assets are assets that our company expects to convert to cash within one year or the operating cycle. Generally, it's one year. The operating cycle is the average time it takes to purchase the inventory and sell it and then collect the cash on that. Now here we have Southwest Airlines. You see the current assets, cash and cash equivalents. That might be money market funds and things like that. Short-term investments, accounts receivable, inventories, prepaid expenses. So they are listed in the order they are expected to be converted back into cash. That is the, what is meant by liquidity. Long-term investments in stocks and bonds of other companies held for more than one year. Or investments in land or buildings that we're not using but we plan to use in the future. These are called long-term investments and they are separated or categorized separate from the current assets. 
The big one is property, plant, and equipment. These assets will serve us for more than one year. Useful life is usually three to five, ten. Uh, we list land first because we never use up land. We then list the others in terms of the useful life, the equipment, and the building. And uh, those are both depreciable assets. Now depreciation is the process we do in accounting of, of allocating the cost of the asset over a number of years. I'm going to depreciate this vehicle over five years. So I'm going to take 20% every year as depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is simply the amount of depreciation that we have expensed thus far in the asset's life. And that tells the person how old the asset is. Here we have land, land improvements, buildings, machinery, molds, cores, rings. So these is a tire and rubber manufacturing company and less accumulated depreciation. So you can see the accumulated depreciation is about half the value of all those, of those assets, 2,244,000 and accumulated depreciation 1,252,000. So it's about half, a little more than half. So it tells you the age of those assets. Intangible assets such as goodwill. Intangible means it has no physical presence, but nevertheless, it's a very important asset for many businesses, Coca-Cola, Nike, as I said, Apple, all of them have what are called brands or trademarks or other intangible assets. Okay? So they are listed separately as well. And that concludes the assets. Now in the current liabilities, it's a lot more simply. Here, these are the debts or obligations the company has to pay within the coming year. Usually lists note payable first, followed by accounts payable. The others basically maybe in order of magnitude, but that, that's not a hard and fast rule here. But nevertheless, it's going to be paid within the coming year. And in this case, notes payable, accounts payable, taxes, <laughs> you've got to pay those, accrued compensation, and so on. Then you look at long-term liabilities. These are going to be paid over more than one year, long-term debt, mortgage payable, things of that nature. And there would be a note in the financial statement to tell you how many uh, what each one of these would be and how long they expect to be paid back over what time period. Lastly is the shareholders equity section. This is straightforward. Simply the value of the common stock sold to the shareholders or stockholders and the earnings since the day the company has started. They have earned revenue and they've earned profit and they've given some of that profit back to the shareholders in the form of dividends and they have kept some of the profit in order to expand the business. The profit they keep is referred to as retained earnings. So there you have the different categories of the classified balance sheet all designed to make it easier for somebody to read and understand that at one point in time these are the assets these are the debts or obligations that are owed, and this is the equity.